Uh, Herbert Storing. I, I admired him. I read his work in grad school. I almost never I saw him lecture once or twice. I didn't really know him. You had the privilege of studying with him. How did that happen? Uh, well, I graduated from the University of Dallas in 1974 and uh, was going off to Chicago for uh, graduate school in political science. And the reason why I was going to Chicago was uh, for uh, two reasons. One, the first one was the study of uh, political philosophy with Joseph Cropsey. Uh, but the second thing, which made it very enticing, was also studying with Herb Storing on uh, American government and the American founding in particular. You were lucky to have undergraduate teachers who... <laughs> Give you yeah. good guidance as to yeah. where to go to grad school. Right? Yeah, no, no, it was it was it was a uh, political science department at the University of Dallas is basically uh, very liberal arts orientated. So uh, I'd read Storing, I'd read Cropsey, so I, I knew what I was uh, was uh, getting into, and I, I got obviously much more uh, when I got there. So you showed up at Chicago. You did you meet Storing right away, or how'd you meet him? Or tell us about what it was like as a yeah, teacher. Yeah, it was very typical of uh, students who went there for uh, political philosophy, uh, in the sense that you, you went there to study with Cropsey, a lot of us primarily. Uh, but then you gradually, not everybody, but gradually uh, took more and more Storing courses uh, because he was a very enticing teacher. Um, and uh, I found that to be true in my case. Uh, I did my master's thesis on Nietzsche. Um, and then wound up uh, big job market for <laughs> those, <laughs> yes, uh, yeah. you know, right? And it's particularly Zarathustra, um, and then moved uh, to do more and more courses with um, with Storing um, on the American founding. What did he teach? I mean, what was your first? Do you remember your first class or first encounter yeah, think, with him? He was I, think, an impro- I mean, I remember just seeing him, but he was an imposing figure. Somehow. Yeah, we should talk his, about his classroom presence. Yeah, it's, it's always, um, yeah. because he was a very solid man, big man. I mean, if you thought about him, you thought maybe this is a guy who could have played college football. And so in that sense, he was very imposing around a seminar uh, desk. Um, but he, it was this odd combination of this impose, imposing you know, physicality, at the same time, a very low-key demeanor in the way he handled the seminars. Um, a very modest uh, approach in which you know people would throw out an idea, he would examine it, have people examine it, and then push to sort of see how far it would go, and then also push the other people to you know sort of argue with it. So by the end of the class, uh, you were you were kind of struck by how much you had covered and how deeply you had covered, without him actually sort of dictating it. So it was this rare combination of both this kind of imposing presence, but a, a very modest but revealing style. Any particular class struck you, or do you remember what the first one was? Or well, they were what all, did he teach? Basically, it was founding. Uh, yeah, by the time I was there, I mean one of the interesting things about Storing's career over the twenty years he was at Chicago was uh, the, the amount of material he covered. I mean, he began at Chicago, sort of taking uh, Leonard White's uh, position in public administration, worked in that area, uh, but then wrote things on political theory, wrote stuff on the American Constitution, wrote things on the American founding wrote things on race relations, right. uh, um, also wrote, began writing uh, materials on uh, the presidency. Um, he wrote essays on public interest. Uh, so it was a very broad uh, agenda, scholarly agenda that he had. Uh, when I was there, um, the focus mostly was the American founding, uh, constitutional law, and then the American presidency. Yeah, I mean, I guess I was most struck by his essays on, I think both Booker, you wrote an essay on Booker T. Washington mm-hmm. and an essay on Frederick Douglass? So I, well, he, yeah, he wrote, wrote two essays. Something about both. Yeah. Uh, um, and he taught a course before I was there, but he had t- taught a course a number of times on uh, slavery in the American Constitution. Wow. Um, and so a lot of uh, students, you know, sort of g- generate a lot of scholarship based on that. Uh, he would take a look at sort of where slavery had come from, uh, how the Constitution handled it, how the founders handled it. Uh, a lot of court cases from the early American period uh, and the evolution of how slavery began to uh, be thought of and changed in the thoughts. Uh, and so you, up, up through Lincoln, so it was a you know, very deep and, and, uh, and uh, everybody said that it was a marvelous course. Yeah, and it's, it seems to me just looking at him from afar that he was more than some of the other students who got into America via political theory or who were students of Leo Strauss. Um, or very influenced by political mm-hmm. theory, at least. He really was interested in the concrete history and facts and circumstances, you know, as you described yeah. the slavery course, it sounds that like wasn't some, let's read one speech of Lincoln and, you know, have, right. d- have deep thoughts about slavery as the original sin of America. I mean, he was really interested in yeah. 
No, I, your point's reality. Really, your point's really well taken because it's too easy to sort of take the ideas from political philosophy and then try to jam them on to, you know, sort of the American founding and then Lincoln and, 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 and the right. history that follows. Um, but I would say that Soren was a real political scientist in the sense that he was a real empiricist in the sense that he really did look at the politic, the, you know, the, the acts of politicians, what they were saying and what they were doing, and then from that would draw um, the, the larger points, uh, you know, sort of underlying principles, underlying notions of justice. So if, to give you a, a very strange example, one of the courses I took from him was a course on administrative law, which could possibly be one of the most boring po courses you could possibly ever take in graduate school. But I found it to be one of the most exciting courses because what seemed obvious to the students was not obvious, in fact, and Storing would sort of plummet the depths of the issues, uh, both in administration, administrative lawmaking, discretion, uh, whether it was arbitrary or not, how separation of powers fit into it. So by the end of the course, you actually had a very profound understanding of the, the nature of administrative um, statesmanship um, altogether. So and the same thing I would say with, for example, the course I took on the American founding. Um, a lot of colleagues would have begun with, for example, the Declaration and then, you know, read the Federalist Papers and then we would have jumped to Lincoln, right? So that's what I did in, my, in, my, <laughs> in the lazy course yeah. I taught on the founding at, uh, when I was as a professor, yeah. right? Um, we read all the secondary literature, so Storing wasn't sort of dismissive. I mean, uh, he wanted you to know what the, 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 the historical thought of the time of that particular time was what the sort of consensus view was. But then, for example, uh, we all bought the four volumes of Ferrand's records of the convention. And I would say we spent half the, the founding course uh, doing nothing but reading the convention debate day to day. Oh. Um, and so it was, he really wanted to go from the bottom to the top uh, in, the, in his approach as opposed to applying some easy paradigm to, to the discussion. I think that struck me as true of his writing, too, kind of very disciplined and sort of modest and unpretentious. Yeah, I'm always struck by the essays because he lets things speak for themselves, and you're, you're brought along in a way that you go, well, that's obvious. And, but then you get to the end of the essay, and you realize just how much you've covered in a kind of unassuming way, but in, in a way that's really quite, I think, profound. And so you wrote your... PhD thesis with him, or we're going to, and before yeah, his untimely I, death. Yeah, I was, um, there were, uh, towards the end of, of uh, Storing's career at the University of Chicago, he um, had accepted a chair at the University of Virginia, and he was going to also run uh, a program on the American presidency at the White Burkett Miller Center for Public Policy there. And he brought uh, myself, uh, Jeff Toulis, who's now at the University of Virginia, and Joe Bassett, who's at- University of Texas. Or did University of Texas, I'm sorry. Unless he moved suddenly, right? Yeah, <laughs> no, he hasn't lost a job, he's yeah, still yeah, there. that's good, yeah. Uh, and Joe Bassett, who's now at Claremont McKenna, right. uh, to help him set up the center and, and run the program. And, uh, and we'd all spent the last year, two years with Storing, working on presidential issues. And so I was gonna write a dissertation under him on separation of powers and executive agreements. Um, oh, well. I, I was the world's expert on executive agreements for, I think, six weeks. <laughs> I think it's relevant again, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, it's become, it's come President back. Obama and Iran and yeah. stuff, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but then um, that was, uh, he was going to start uh, in 19, the, the fall of 1977. Um, and we actually had a staff meeting uh, the first day uh, that we all got together at the Miller Center. And um, Storing began to divvy up responsibilities. Um, Joe was going to be doing one thing and Jeff was another and then actually I was supposed to help Storing do the final edits on uh, the collection, uh, the complete anti-federalist. And, uh, but all of us were working in the presidential area and so then he got us all settled and straightened out and uh, he shoot us out of the door because he had to actually write um, a piece on Martin Diamond, uh, oh. who was one of his closest friends who had died essentially a month before right. testifying in front of the U.S. Senate on the Electoral College. And then Storing himself went off to the gym in a handball game and died of a heart attack. So it was really... And he was really young. He was only 49. Yeah, Marty yeah. was, I think, 57 maybe. Yeah. But I remember the shock of, I mean, of course, terrible in any circumstances, but yeah. the back-to-back -back deaths of these two 
really great students of the American founding and great people too. Yeah, really. and the, the thing about Storing's career was that, I mean, as accomplished as it was in all these areas uh, and sort of groundbreaking in a lot of different respects, um, you had the sense that he had been building up to a point where he really had a lot more to say about uh, both the American founding and the American presidency in particular. And so a lot of that legacy has been left to, you know, for students to carry on. Um, but you know, when I actually go back and look at my notes, uh, because I've kept my notebooks from Chicago days, I'm always struck by when I thought I've had some insight about something, I'll occasionally go back and discover that Storing had put it there yeah. you know, 20 years before or 30 years before. And it struck me looking over his writings, I think of him as a, uh, I knew Diamond better, and maybe, I, maybe I'm associating a characteristic of Diamond to, uh, to Storing inappropriately, but I think of Storing as a rather careful writer and maybe not a very fast or prolific writer. So that was the case with Marty, maybe less so with Storing. But um, when you look back, he wrote a lot, actually. I mean, he died at age 49. He got his degree, what, in his late 20s, really at 20 years, you probably, mm -hmm. as a professor. And there's quite a lot of material. And really, as you said at the beginning, on a diverse... Uh, range of topics, all within the kind of American constitutional yeah. system area, but uh, you know, ranging from slavery to individual profiles of thinkers to the separation of powers and the founding to administrative, rather current d debates about admi the administrative state and bureaucracy. And yeah. No, it's I. You know, when you're taking a course with him, uh, or you're there at Chicago th at that time, you think, okay, this is what Storing's about. So, in this particular case, it's the presidency and right. American founding. And then you step back a few years later when you've had time to sort of go back and, and look at his career, and you realize just how wide-ranging, uh, and not only wide-ranging, but thoughtful in, in right. so many different areas. I mean, um, one of his first major essays was uh, an examination of Herbert Simon, who's part of the scientific management school that was right. so prevalent in the first half of the 20th century. And Simon himself thought that Storing had probably done him more justice Is that in, right? his, in his essay in the way he uh, not only took it seriously, but also the sort of weak points in the scientific management theory. So it was a, a good example of, of Storing's both fair-mindedness about the sources he was looking at, but also his willingness to, you know, sort of poke and prod and go a little bit deeper than, than the, the normal uh, scholar in that area. Would you recommend anything particular for people who want to begin with, uh, where, where to begin with Storing's uh, writings? I think one of his classic essays, um, there's a lot, but I think one of the ones that sort of needs, you know, you forget how much um, ground again he broke is he wrote an essay on the, the Constitutional Convention, um, which at the time the argument was, you know, this is the reason why the Constitution we have was a series of compromises. Right. You know, these are people just sort of, you know, different interest groups, you know, sort of battling out, and this is what got produced was the Constitution. Um, Stoyne uh, said, well, that was obviously part of, you know, the craftsmanship and statesmanship that was going on, but that if you looked a little bit more carefully, you saw larger principles at stake and how those principles got worked out in a way that gave us, you know, the Constitution that, you know, survives to this day. So it's a very revealing sort of example of Storing's ability to, again, look at something, see the facts as they are politically, but also understand that there's something a little bit more deeper going on. Well, that's good because I had forgotten that essay if I ever read it. So now <laughs> I'm going to go. Now I'm going to go read it. Yeah. So thank you for that, and, and thanks for taking the time to discuss your teacher Herbert Storing.